Hey everybody, welcome to the Magic Weekly News Update for October 1st, 2017 on The Manalik. I'm John as always, and the big news of this week was of course Ixalan being released on Friday. That shut down any other really major announcements, but there's some interesting little things, and then of course, story time. Up first, a Reddit user, Mooks311, posted about a survey that they were sent by NW Insights on behalf of WotC. It involved several comparison questions about 15 card boosters and an ad token, the boosters we know now, and 15 card boosters with an ad token and a code token redeemable for perks in Magic Digital products. It involved various comparisons of prices for these hypothetical boosters and how much the survey taker would buy of each. Obviously, this continues the info trickle we've seen about wizards investigating the potential of codes in boosters for something in Magic Digital products. This, of course, has absolutely no information about if they're packs, cards, avatars, hats, achievements, who knows, but they're clearly investigating what people want and what they'll pay for it. Of course, Magic players being Magic players, a lot of very loud people will be demanding that we get more stuff and for less money than we're paying right now, and of course, anyone with a slight understanding of business will realize that's simply not possible. How this all ends up if we see codes worth something of value or a price increase in packs, who knows? Who knows? This could lead to absolutely zero changes. One interesting knock-on effect that I'll be watching, though, is if these codes do come in and they are worth something, how much are they worth? Can you recoup a bit of your money from buying packs by selling codes? We'll see how, how all this goes. Up next, with the release of Ixalan, we had an update to the comprehensive magic rules. Rule 614.16 was updated so that the confusing issue with Kalatas and Anointed Procession is no longer confusing. Previously, Anointed Procession and similar effects would trigger if a creature was dying due to a spell or ability, but not due to a state-based action. So, destroy target creature, made two tokens, but deal three damage and then that creature dying due to the state-based action of having lethal damage marked on it made one token. But now, if a creature dies, it dies, and you get the two tokens. Some further clarity for the sometimes convoluted magic rules. The next wave of judge foils has been revealed. For those who don't know, judges who perform well and are recommended by L2s and L3 judges get sent judge foils for, for their good work. I received a pack of these uh, before as players at my pre-release sent in some favorable feedback, but I don't really tend to get them as I stick to making sure that my store's community stays great, so I don't really get to interact too much with other higher level, higher level judges. Oh well. Anyways, the newest pack of promos has an alt art Gaddock Teague, a Portal Third Kingdom reprint of Capture of Jingzu, a $300 card by the way, an alt art Doran the Siege Tower, and a never before foiled Prismatic Geoscope, now foiled. Very cool cards and a great bonus for judges doing great jobs. Finally for the news, John Avon launched a Kickstarter to print and sell unhinged lands playmats, with the base reward being a playmat for £27. The Kickstarter exploded. £213,177, about $285,000 American, has been raised so far with three days left to go. A fourth stretch goal was re reached so that now every order includes prints of all five of the gorgeous unstable lands. If you want your hands on these playmats and these prints, definitely go check it out in the next three days before the campaign closes. With that out of the way, it's time for story time. This week we leave behind Vraska and Jace, we leave behind Huatli, and we get to meet the merfolk of Ixalan in the story called The Shapers. We meet Kopala, who we learn is one of nine merfolk leaders who take their names from the river tributaries that they represent. In this case, Kopala leads the Kopala tribe from the Kopala River tributary. Kopala is meditating at the primal wellspring, which uh, has eyes apparently? Like, look at that art. Kopala is feeling the pulse of Orozka, the city that the merfolk have been keeping secret, even from themselves. The pulse of Orozka skips a beat. But why? Tashana, who is helping Kopala meditate, describes the skipped beat as a dolphin trying to break through the river water's surface, although it cannot breach. Sounds a lot like a planeswalker trying to leave Ixalan. Huh. Another leader, Kumena, arrives at the wellspring to talk with Tashana. Kumena has brought a man captured from the Sun Empire, the, uh, the, the empire that Huatli belongs to. The man tells the merfolk that two pirate captains, one a bull-headed man, Angrath, the other a woman with hair like twisting vines, Vraska, are both searching for the city and converging on the area, as well as Huatli, who is searching after her vision, which we know was a planeswalk attempt. Kumena feels that Orozka is being threatened and that they need to know where it is in order to protect it, or perhaps even use its power to defend it. 
We learn that an entity called the Last Guardian, who knows who that is, it could be someone we know, it could be someone new, who knows, entrusted the secret to the merfolk to keep it hidden so that its power won't be abused. Kumena leaves to deal with a presence that was felt drawing near, but the mood is clear. Kumena wants to seize the city just like the other races, while Tishana wants to keep it secret. Tishana, however, relents that the city may not be able to be kept hidden any longer, but hopes that the Great River will grant them the wisdom to guard it without using its power. Tishana tracks Kumena, who arrives just in time to conjure a storm to subdue the approaching ship, which, in the art of Rivers of Rebuke, appears to be the belligerent Vraska's ship. During the conjuring of the spell, however, Kumena slips out of the spell and punches Tishana in the face, knocking her out, ending the story. So all is not well in the merfolk tribes. It appears that at least two tribes are at war, and uh, everybody is still searching for Araska and potentially getting to it pretty soon. So keep an eye on the stories. We'll see what happens next week. And uh, as always, let me know what you think about the news this week. Let me know what you think about the story. If you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at The Mana Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at facebook.com slash Mana Leak, twitch.tv slash Mana Leak, and patreon.com slash Mana Leak. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button. If you want to see more and you have not already, click subscribe. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.